Natural Preventive and Therapeutic Approaches to Diabetes Type 2 In this lecture, we will discuss the interaction between sugar and carbohydrates on one hand, and your metabolism and health on the other hand. We will cover a spectrum of metabolic disorders, ranging from pre-diabetes to full-blown diabetes. We are not going to discuss the kind of diabetes that occurs early in life as a result of pancreatic failure, which is called diabetes type I instead, we are going to discuss the kind of diabetes that results from lifestyle, including what kind of food you eat, how physically active you are, and how you respond to stress and tension. This type of diabetes called diabetes type 2. We will also uncover some of the tools that can help you prevent and even reverse diabetes. Diabetes is one of the key risk factors for kidney disease, leading to dialysis, heart disease, and stroke. Diabetes, in fact, affects every organ in the body without any exception. We need to think of the diagnosis of diabetes as the end result of a much longer continuum, starting with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome before manifesting itself as the disease known as diabetes. This is important because even before the blood tests show that you have diabetes, there are signs that can be attended to. One of the first signs that you are at risk for developing diabetes is the presence of insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone that controls blood sugar and is produced by the pancreas. Stimuli such as insulin and even exercise carry blood sugar into the cells, where they can be used for generating energy. Insulin resistance occurs when the transport of sugar into the body cells no longer works properly. This usually happens because the insulin receptors on the surface of the recipient cells get exhausted due to the recurrent and almost non-stopping stimulation. This scenario can take place when an individual consumes carbohydrates and sugar more than her slash his body actually needs. Consequently, when insulin receptors develop resistance to insulin, the pancreas has to keep working harder and harder to produce more insulin to overcome the exhaustion of the insulin receptors, and eventually, the pancreas cannot keep up. It becomes exhausted itself and cannot produce enough insulin. This is when people develop insulin requiring diabetes and need insulin injections. Insulin resistance is part of a larger syndrome called metabolic syndrome, which has four components, insulin resistance, high blood pressure, abnormalities in the cholesterol panel, low HDL and high triglycerides, and abdominal obesity, accumulating fat in the belly area. Nearly a quarter of all adults in the developed world are obese or at least overweight. This is the key trigger for developing diabetes type 2. There are five key areas that people on the path to diabetes need to focus on, proper nutrition, physical activity, responses to stress and tension, sleep patterns, and environmental toxins. Most people do not realize that lack of sleep can lead to insulin resistance. Lack of sleep is a stress on the body, and stress raises blood sugar and makes insulin resistance worse. Research shows that people who tend to get 5 hours or less of sleep each night have a higher risk of developing diabetes. Nutrition is the key to shifting the diabetes continuum. Sugar and carbohydrates are digested at different rates, and the rate of digestion is called the glycemic index. The higher the index, the faster the body converts food to sugar. Another way of measuring the conversion of food to sugar is called the glycemic load, which is an even more accurate assessment of the impact of food on blood sugar and, ultimately, on insulin levels. A food with a glycemic load of greater than 20 is high, and a food with a glycemic load of less than 10 is low. Foods that have a low glycemic index and a low glycemic load are the foods that are the best for everyone, but especially for someone who is overweight, prediabetic, or has diabetes. In general, you should not eat foods that spike up your insulin level, which are mainly every type of food that is made of or with refined sugar. Soluble fiber, which is found in oats, bran, beans, and lentils, lowers cholesterol and blood sugar, by decreasing the speed of sugar absorbance in the digestive system. 
Green leafy vegetables have a low glycemic load and low glycemic index. Cruciferous vegetables, such as cauliflower, broccoli, and cabbage, are all good choices. Other options include eggs and fish, which can be consumed in moderation. Lean meat such as free-range chicken and turkey will not spike up your insulin. Choose fruits that have a low glycemic index, such as apples, berries, peaches, pears, plums, oranges, and grapefruit. On the other hand, dates, banana, grapes, and raisins are high in sugar. Nuts, such as walnuts and almonds, are good snacks, but only eat about 15 of any type of nut at any given time because of the many calories that nuts contain. Celery sticks and baby carrots are also good snacks. Carrots have a low glycemic load and are high in fiber, which slows down the absorption of sugar and lowers blood sugar. Granola is incredibly high on the glycemic index, but you can substitute granola with a high fiber cereal, a protein smoothie, an egg white omelet, or some steel cut oats. If you are trying to lower your blood sugar, you need to find healthier alternatives for cookies, cakes, candy, and ice cream. In addition, you should not drink soda, fruit juice, or alcohol. You also need to find substitutes for anything white, whether it is a bagel, bread, rice cakes, or potatoes. You can also use spices in a creative way. For example, add cinnamon, which has been shown to lower blood sugar, and a few walnuts to steel cut oats for breakfast. Instead of drinking coffee with cream in it, start drinking organic green tea. Garlic and onions help bring down blood sugar, which should be part of your general focus on eating green leafy vegetables with light amounts of olive oil and turmeric, which has a healthy anti-inflammatory effect as well. Fenugreek can be used as a spice that lowers blood sugar. There are also properties in vinegar that have been shown to lower blood sugar. You need to make sure that you are making time for exercise, which builds muscle, decreases insulin resistance by increasing the resilience of your muscular cells, decreases blood pressure, improves cholesterol, and improves your sense of well-being. You may use a pedometer, a small device that counts the number of steps that you take, and work toward the goal of taking 10,000 steps each day. One of the best added benefits of exercise is that it helps you sleep better, which is your first defensive line against diabetes. However, people with a history of intestinal ulcers, gout, or liver problems should not take niacin. In addition, not all brands of niacin are the same, no flush niacin does not work to lower the triglycerides or raise the HDL. Niacin should be taken under your physician's guidance because your liver needs to be monitored when taking it. Foods that will raise your LDL include saturated fat, beef, pork, lamb, and dark poultry, and full-fat dairy, whole milk, whole cheese, whole cottage cheese, full-fat yogurts, butter, and cream. To lower your LDL, substitute the meats you eat with vegetable protein, which has zero cholesterol, and if you consume dairy from a cow, make sure that it is organic and less fat. Organic tofu is a great substitution for meat. Tofu comes from the soybean, so it has no cholesterol. Nuts are a good source of protein, but they are high in calories, so when you eat nuts, use them only as a garnish. In addition, omega-3 eggs can be used to make egg white omelettes and organic, low-fat yogurt is a great source of protein. Fiber can also be used to lower cholesterol. You can find fiber in whole foods such as steel cut oats and psyllium seeds. Increasing your fiber slowly, you should eventually consume at least 35 grams of fiber per day. Shrimp is a fish that is extremely high in cholesterol. Instead, try to moderately eat white fishes such as cod, haddock, place, pollock, coli, tab, flounder, red mullet, gurnard, and tilapia. Oily fishes such as herring, bloater, kipper, hilsa, pilchards, salmon, sardines, sprats, trout, mackerel are less favorable because they contain higher levels of contamination with heavy metals such as mercury, arsenic and cadmium. It is worth remembering that fish is still an animal product, and it still contains cholesterol. 
Artichoke extract has been shown to lower LDL by 15% when taken in a 500 mg tablet three times per day. Taking approximately 2 grams of plant sterols extract per day will decrease your LDL by about 10%. EGCG is the active ingredient of green tea, and taking 500 mg of EGCG twice a day will lower your LDL by 13%. You can also drink about 1 to 4 cups of organic green tea to get the same effect. Taking 300 mg of pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, 3 times per day can lower your cholesterol as much as 36%. Red yeast rice can be taken in 600 mg tablets 4 times per day, 2 tablets in the morning and 2 at night for a total of 2400 mg, to reduce cholesterol by 42%. If you have a history of not being able to take statins, called statin intolerance, or if you have muscle or joint aches, do not take red yeast rice as a supplement. Red yeast rice can also lower the enzyme COC-10, so when taking red yeast rice, also take 100 mg per day of COC-10. Copyright Academy House www.academy.house